Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John, and it's time for another episode of the Think Tank. This video is kind of a sequel to something that I talked about two years ago. I made a video called The Alternative Charts Are a Total Mess. And if they were a mess at that point, well, I guess they're totally off the deep end now because I am so confused by what I'm seeing. The labels that are and are not affixed to certain playlists and certain artists. It's a very bewildering time, for lack of a better word, for alternative music. One of the main things we're going to be talking about in this video is the further mainstreamification of the alternative space that includes rock and indie, everything like that. I find it very strange as to what's getting placements and playlists and also what's getting airplay now. It's a mix of veteran bands like the Foo Fighters and the Black Keys, along with somebody like Willow Smith, anything that has a Travis Barker feature on it, and then somebody like the TikTok star turned musician Jaden. I feel that it's very odd right now because, as we talked about in that other video, the dictionary definition of of alternative music, ironically enough, is music that is outside of the regular mainstream, something that's meant to be a bit more challenging, more perceptive to listen to. Everyone right now seems to be in one of two camps that feel very extreme one way or the other, like there's no gray area in between, which there totally is. It's either A, everything has to be labeled by its specific subgenre, and we have to break it down, and this rock artist isn't actually a rock artist because they were pop before, or else can't be over here here is saying, we're genreless. we don't have a genre at all, which really bothers me. I get that something can be more than one thing. It's not just maybe rock or alternative. You're also tossing in some hip-hop influences or something electronic or indie, folk, whatever. I can get the frustration on both sides, but I feel like a lot of these discussions become more harmful than they are helpful, and people just end up more divided than ever, which is sadly a continuing theme outside of just music, but I'm going to put a pin in that for now. This is a two-way street, people. If a rock artist can make a pop song, which we've seen time and time again, Panic at the Disco, Imagine Dragons, whoever else, then a pop artist is obviously capable of making something in the rock or alternative sphere. What I'm getting at here is that they can obviously make songs that fall under that umbrella. I'm just kind of questioning beyond that the authenticity of some of the stuff that is charting right now, especially considering a lot of these people are definitely from the mainstream. I was inspired to make this video after looking at the alternative charts on Billboard for July, and just taking a scroll through here, you can see how confusing it gets. You've got everything from Billie Eilish to Imagine Dragons, which I struggle to always call alternative, even though they do definitely touch that sometimes, to established acts like the Foo Fighters or the Black Keys, so we're kind of getting thrown all over the place. You can call me a gatekeeper for that mentality, but what I'm trying to say is that there is a clear difference between both alternative, alternative rock, and alternative pop. These are all distinct qualities, and there's nothing inherently wrong with any of them. It's just very weird to see somebody throwing out a alternative rock playlist, and then there, at the top of it all, it's Billie Eilish, perhaps the most mainstream artist of the moment. Beyond the veterans, just scrolling through this chart, you can see that they also don't really exactly know what to play, so they're just digging up old stuff that's getting popular on TikTok, or maybe it's way late, and they never never gave it attention in the first place, but oh, a lot of people used it in a TikTok, so now it's getting airplay. I'm talking about a band like Beach Bunny, who were absolutely amazing, they deserve the attention that they're getting, and I hope that you'll check them out if you've never listened to them, but I'm just saying, the playlists and the radio, they didn't really pay them much attention until a song like Dream Boy caught on and exploded on TikTok. Now you could say that that's a good thing for somebody to actually get attention, and I'm not gonna deny that, obviously you want want the talent to pull through, but I'm looking at other tracks like Stargazing by The Neighborhood that wasn't even really released as a single until after it started gaining traction there, and it definitely didn't hit the alternative charts until way later after people kind of force-fed it and the programmers were forced to pay attention. I mean, for fuck's sake, there's a song right now called Freaks by Surf Curse that is eight 
years old, but it is currently all over the alternative sphere, and I don't even think this band are active right now. But guess what? It was popular on social media, so now everyone's like, oh yeah, let's just playlist that everywhere. Throw it on the airwaves. It's so confusing because instead of pushing alternative artists that absolutely deserve your attention, deserve fans, and deserve new exposure in the year 2021 and moving forward, they rely on the old veterans, like I mentioned before, and for other people to do the work for them. And a lot of this is just rediscovering or else discovering for the first time stuff that didn't get attention years ago. Of course, this is not a bad thing, but I'm concerned that we're always looking back and checking the rear view for what we may have missed when a lot of the answers are right under our noses. So I want to take the time right now to recommend some alternative bands, some artists that I really think you should be listening to. Spanish Love Songs, Meet Me at the Altar, Cheek Face, Kenny Hoopla, Nothing But Thieves, Sumo Psycho, Wolf Alice, Buddha Trixie, Creeper, Octavio the Dweeb, Shame, Pup, Magdalena Bay, Movements, Biba Doobie, Rina Sawayama, there are so many options, people, and these are not just one way or the other, like hot or cold, they're definitely alternative. A lot of these are a lot more genre fluid, and I think that those fusions are awesome, but why are they not blowing up in the same vein as these random songs that are either older, or maybe you're just pushing the same singles every time this established veteran act puts something out, that's gonna rise up to number one just because of the name? Every artist that I just listed is bubbling over with talent. They're just waiting to be discovered, and there is no real reason as to why they shouldn't be getting attention, both on the radio, in playlists, and just in general use in public. Instead of relying on the same crutches that we've always fallen back on, we should be thinking forward and looking to stuff that actually carries real weight, real emotion and authenticity. And if I'm not mistaken, I feel like alternative as a scene, as a space, it's built on transparency, on authenticity, and I just feel like so many of these artists, like your MGKs, are riding out the wave instead and taking on rock because I guess it's cool to do so. And it's not just in GK. It's the others like Jaden and Willow too, and not to say that everything I've heard is totally terrible. It just doesn't feel like it necessarily has a soul, and obviously they do have their real feelings. I'm not trying to silence their voices or anything. It's just that I have a hard time feeling like I relate to the struggle when I know your entire backstory and the additional privilege and the total lack of relatability is definitely very clear. What do you guys think about the current state of alternative music? Are you pleased? Do you totally ignore the charts and just do music discovery on your own? I would love to know what you think. I will leave a list of the bands that I recommended in the description down below. I do hope that you'll check them out, give them some support, and other than that, there's a couple of recent videos on screen now, and I'll be back soon with more on Beyond AR TV.